Well, welcome. This is another episode of the Know Your Numbers podcast, and today's guest is a very special one in the name of Tabitha Perry. Uh, I'm honored to have her on the show. We we go way back a um, couple months, actually. <laughs> uh, it's been fun like getting longer. to know her and uh, a little bit about her and her family, but I'm excited to, to dive into um, a wealth of conversation with her today. Tabitha, welcome to the show. If you could just introduce yourself, give us an idea of what you got going on. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Well, I'm Tabitha, and I like to start out by in- introducing myself by saying I am a strong and courageous, bold and consistent child of God. Yes, and I you could are. give you, <laughs> thank you. I could give you all the labels of I'm a wife, a mom, mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, all those things. But I really feel like describing myself and who I feel like I am at the core is the best way to go about it. But I have my own life coaching business and I work with women to help them figure out how to make small edits in their life so they get big results so they can turn their chaos into an orderly life. Amen. Amen. And that's uh that's a beautiful way to start off because I think that's where I would like to take this conversation. And when I uh set this up, that's kind of where I envisioned it going is um building confidence in women. I think it's good to see somebody out there helping helping that come into reality, but it's also something that I've seen is tough because um you know, as men, we often tell ourselves that we have to be the confident ones. And I almost think that rubs off on the woman sometimes, like they're not allowed to be confident, but uh, quite the opposite. I find that that confident woman, um, like yourself, know who they are and, and what they're good at and are able to accomplish great things. So I'd love to hear your take on the importance of confidence in women and, and what we can do to, to grow their confidence. Yeah, for sure. I love that that is on your heart and uh, you want to talk about that. So what I think is fascinating is that confidence shows up in women and men so differently, Mm -hmm. right? What a man looks like when he is confident, feeling confident is so different than what a woman looks like when she is confident. And even we can on the reverse side, say when someone looks like they're confident, but they don't actually feel like it, right? And I feel like for women, we just maybe wear our emotions on our sleeves more. So you just Mm -hmm. know when we're not confident, but I think that there's a lot of men out there that aren't as confident as they project. And that's like a really heavy load to carry, Yeah, you know, trying to act like you're more confident than you are when, when it's okay not to know everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what would you say, um, a unconfident male does to a a female, you know, like in in a relationship, how can a male who's not confident, although he portrays it, be a detriment to the woman that's in that relationship? I, I see that quite often, I think. Yeah. So a lot of times when a man isn't confident, he's very insecure. Mm-hmm. And what insecure people do is that they like to tear other people down to get them as at the same level that they are. So men will, you know, just not treat the woman very respectfully. He mm-hmm. won't give her an opportunity to talk. And it may not even be like blatant rudeness. It just won't be asking her opinion, um, really giving her the same respect that she deserves that he would expect from her. Yeah, that's awesome, Tabitha. And I, I just to give the audience a, an idea of how you've gained all this knowledge. I, I mean, some of it comes from life experience, but you do also have uh, quite a few certificates and degrees. So I'd love to touch upon a little bit of back your background too, so people can know where you're coming from. Yeah, absolutely. So I have my bachelor's in criminal justice and Mm -hmm. a minor in psychology and a master's in um, social work. So I have done lots of schooling, but Mm -hmm. even with that, it really is experience, right? Like I know a lot of really smart people who have PhDs and if you put them out on the street, they don't, they don't have any street smarts, (laughs) (laughs) any street smarts. Mm -hmm. Um, But those are some of the things that I just, I absolutely love to learn. And so I continue now, like I love to read multiple books a month, listen to podcasts, all of the things, just trying to continue to build my confidence as a woman. And um, it's like a muscle, like you have to keep cultivating it and developing it. And so that way um, you just have to kind of keep pushing through and, Mm -hmm. and learning. So I have a good foundation for learning and loving people well. And that is what I really enjoy doing. 
Amen. Yes, you do. And uh, it shows every time I'm in the room with you and uh, your husband, Stephen, it's, it's, all, it's all out there. Love just radiates. So it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome to see. And you're also instilling it in your two girls, uh, Liberty and Lily, who I had the pleasure of meeting. And they're uh, a light in, in everyone's life as well. So they are. Um, and they loved hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good. Although Stephen probably wished I had some makeup on myself after the end of it, but uh, I'm glad he that, was kind that of hoping have... you would have had the yeah. nail polish and the hair and ponytails. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Luckily, I have some experience. My I have sisters growing up, so I have I know I know how to say no when I need to. So <laughs> luckily, I did not did not end up with any uh, makeup on. But um, I I would love to dive into uh, family and relationships and and kind of the idea of money in those relationships because um through discussions with people and just my research and my understanding money is is a great resource to have but it can also be um a weapon that can be used against you you know it's the leading one of the leading causes of divorce and and why relationships falter so for somebody that that has such a great uh loving relationship and a great marriage i i would love to uh hear your take on how you can have that conversation around money and, and anything that somebody who might be looking to, to get in a relationship. We have some young listeners, um, but they know that there's some importance of getting your, your money mindset right before uh, getting into a relationship with someone else. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so good. So when my husband, Steven and I got together, I am like very conservative, right? And I grew up where there was um, you save for retirement, you put it in your like 401k and maybe you have some annuities, um, and then you have a savings account and that's where you put all of your money. And that is what your emergency is, right? Yep. So that to me is just what everybody did. Well, meeting Steven, who is in finance, like yep. that is not his world. And there are so many options and products you can use to like utilize your money and get more interest on it. So I'm going to be honest, it is taking us years for yeah. us to get on the same page. And we still are not. But right. the thing is, is we continue to have open communication about it. So it was really important for me when we first got married to have a savings account. And that drove him crazy <laughs> because we could use that same amount of money in the savings account and put it into a life insurance policy yep. and get way more interest on it and have it for a longer term. But it just did not compute to me. So the most loving thing that he could have done is help me by doing the savings account and giving that to me and continue to like teach me about what some of the other things could do. So my suggestion for those that are, you know, navigating marriage or, you know, dating or Mm -hmm. wanting to date and like the money talk is just from the very beginning, like ask what their expectations are of money. Like, how do you use money? How do your parents use money? And don't try to change the other person, like accept them for where they're at and give them time to learn. I had to see that what Steven was doing was stable because I'm going to be honest, when we got together, I actually had more money in the bank than he did. (laughs) Come on. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Right. Right. I, I helped pay off a lot of things for him, but Uh he had the better job and he just needed help with not buying snow machines and (laughs) you know, all the things a 24 year old does when you make a lot of money. And so we got to come together as a team and I helped him figure out like what was more important to spend money on. And then he also helped me to figure out how other ways that we can save that weren't the typical way that I was raised with. Wow. That's so good. And I think that the biggest takeaway is something you said early there is it's kind of a work in progress and it still is, but it's awesome to see that, that from where you started to where you're at now is, is uh, remarkable. I feel like as humans, we just want it, want it all right away. And we want the, the perfect plan laid out, but to understand that you're going to, it's a journey as with everything relationships more than, more than anything, arguably, but um, money plays into a lot of it. And to, to know that there's a way of, of talking it out and having that conversation is inspiring. So um, and thank you for being so open about that. I, I do know that's something that I want to touch upon really is like, how can we grow um, the conversation around money? Because a lot of people aren't willing to share um, for whatever reason, lack of confidence, maybe they're embarrassed. They don't, they, they feel like they don't know enough. So how can we as a society um, and also just as community of people that we hang out with change the way 
that we look at money and discuss money and, and invest money, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's this multi like layer problem. And so really when you peel back the layers is that a lot of times we so associate money with our identity mm -hmm. and that if we make a lot, then that means that we're valuable. Right. And now granted, there is a certain amount of money that is exchanged for value, but who I am as a person, it does not, is not determined by how much money I make or how much money my husband makes. Mm -hmm. And that is just kind of the root of it. I think is the insecurity, right? And right. I'm yep. going back to that thing that people <laughs> are afraid to talk about it because number one, we don't have practice either. Yeah. Like it takes practice talking about things. Right. Um, and number two, like being able to, to understand what it is that we actually view of it mm -hmm. and to take into account how we were raised the different money mindsets we want to have and like be able to kind of create it ourselves. So when we're unsure of where we're at, it's really hard to communicate on it. And right. so being clear with where you're at, it's really important. And for women, I'm going to like learning about money isn't really pushed on us mm -hmm. at all. It's yeah. not a conversation I have with my, most of my girlfriends. Now I do have um, a gaggle of gals that I hang mm -hmm. out with that are all entrepreneurs and we can talk more numbers yeah. because that's more of the language. It's, it's more like appropriate, but right. for just me and my friend going and getting a pedicure, we mm -hmm. don't necessarily. And so it is interesting how there's some t in certain situations, it's more appropriate to talk about it than in others. Yeah, no, that's good. And uh, I think men are kind of different. Like we will talk about money and, and how we can make money and how we can make more money and all these things. Um, whereas women are like, it doesn't matter too terribly much. Let's just have some fun. But at the end of the day, it also does matter. So we'll have the conversations when we need to. And I guess that's, <laughs> that's a good thing about women. They keep us uh, structured and accountable. We, we can come up with crazy ideas, but uh, if they're mm -hmm. not working and they're not paying the bills, then they're not worth very much. So <laughs> it's awesome. And Tabitha, you, you mentioned the importance of, of knowing yourself and, and who you are and the values. And when you came on, you introduced yourself with your personal contract. I'd love to hear a little bit about that, how you came to know who you were, what worked for you, um, what you can use to um, describe yourself and, and how it changes the way you carry yourself since you've kind of grown into that. Yeah. So really it was kind of the opposite. I lived a life and acted in a way that didn't feel good. And mm -hmm. so I realized, oh, I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to be this way. And so I had to try on kind of different characteristics, different things, different ideas in order for me to get to be where I can be confident and yep. stand and being courageous and strong. Now, do I constantly feel courageous and strong and bold and consistent? Absolutely <laughs> not. No, but that's the reason I have the self-contract is because right. I want to step into that and I want to continuously um, stretch myself to do that. So I, um, there were times in my life that I was not standing in integrity with myself, that I was mm -hmm. making choices of partying and having boyfriends I shouldn't and doing all those things where I, I wasn't being like stepping into the potential that God had for me. And I fell off in my spirit. There was a discontentment. And I really feel like when we have a spirit of discontentment, it really goes down into the core of who we are. And it's mm -hmm. so important to reevaluate like, and not judge yourself, just get curious, right? Like, okay, I'm feeling this way when I do X, Y, Z, how do I want to feel? So what do I need to do to get that? And so our thoughts affect our feelings and our feelings affect what we do. And so right. if we can figure out the thoughts and feelings, then I realized I wasn't doing what I said that I wanted to do. I wanted to, you know, get married and, and have an amazing husband and live a, like have a solid relationship with God, but I wasn't doing the things to get me there. So I had a you know, have a lot of tough conversations with myself and, mm. and hold myself accountable to that. And, yeah. and that's hard though, because I feel like as Americans, we like to be comfortable and those conversations are uncomfortable. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And what, what uh, has helped you? Cause for somebody that might be living in that, that comfortable lifestyle and they, they say, well, okay, I get what you're saying, but I'm good. Like, I, I don't really need to make any changes. What would you say one to that person and what could that person do to kind of see that there's a greater opportunity out there for 
the one who's willing to take on some discomfort and be a little more honest with themselves. Yeah. So I would ask them, would you be happy if a year from now you were in the exact same place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're doing the exact same thing. (laughs) And I know it's like, it's a common question, right? Like it's not anything mind blowing. Um, but just for, even for myself, if I get frustrated in a certain area, but I'm like, no, I'm just not going to do anything about it. Like really? Mm -hmm. So next month, if I'm still struggling with this, like you're not going to do anything about it. Like, Oh, okay. I need to, because I am a woman of my word and I Mm -hmm. want to constantly be growing now. Growing is also really exhausting, Mm -hmm. (laughs) constantly improving constant. And a lot of people don't want to do it because they're already tired. Mm-hmm. Like they don't even have the capacity to grow. And that's where they really need to figure out how they can get good where they're at and content. And so that way they can move out of abundance and not out of like lack and scarcity of like, well, I don't have enough. So I need to yeah. grow because I need more. Like, well, what if you got to a place of, no, I'm good where I'm at, but I, I would like more. I know God has more potential for me and I've got mm-hmm. a big purpose I need to step into. So I really think that that is like the difference of a mindset shift that someone could take. Yeah, that's beautiful. And um, to go off of that a little further, I know one thing about you is you do have a lot of confidence to you. And now you're looking to instill that into others and and kind of bring that to the marketplace and, and help others through it. So I'd love to hear how coming from that service mindset and looking to improve the lives of other people and lift other people up with you has really shaped a lot of your life over the past year and and even beforehand if if it has <laughs> yeah i have absolutely loved being able to like pour into people and now granted i a caveat is i still need to be pouring into myself so right. i have something to pour into others and i think that that is a key piece that people in the marketplace miss is they're like oh i want to be you know servant leaders and i want to just pour into all my clients and work 80 hours a week and Mm -hmm. fantastic, but make sure you're taking care of yourself. And by taking care of yourself, you have to go back to who you are Mm -hmm. and to know who you are. You have to know whose you are. And so being able to kind of come full circle is really important. That's so good. That's so good. And and by whose you are, I do believe you mean the uh, most high, our loving father. Um, And with that being said, I'd love to talk a little bit about faith and, um, your faith journey a little bit, because um, I know everybody's got a different story. I also think that um, some women out there might have some faith, but they're not willing to be open about it, or, or they've struggled with it, or they don't know where it lies. So Tabitha, for you, how has is, how is your faith evolved over your lifetime, and, and where does it stand right now? How important is it to you? Yeah, absolutely. So I accepted Jesus into my heart when I was 10. And I did that because I was lonely. I was the only Mm -hmm. child. My parents were divorced. I was lonely. And I learned about this Jesus guy Mm -hmm. who loved me and who'd be with me no matter what. He would never abandon me and he'd be my friend. Mm -hmm. And that inspired me. And I'm like, I want that. And I knew that I couldn't do things on my own. Even at 10, I was kind of a perfectionist and wanted to do things well all the time and knew that I couldn't. And so again, knowing Jesus's love and knowing that he would forgive me was so, so important. So I was really involved in my church. I led, um, in high school, I led like the middle schoolers. I did all of the church things. Well, then at 15, 16 years old, um, a man came into my life that was much older and unfortunately Mm -hmm. took advantage of me. And so that rocked my faith. Mm -hmm. And I really questioned who I was, um, what had happened to me. And, um, was confused because I was able to, in my mind at that time, make what had happened part of, um, it was a relationship. And so I remember reading through my journals, even at that point, and there was God weaved throughout that, like, God, why do I feel this way? Why, why does he treat me this way? Like I, I was seeking God and I knew that he loved me, but I was really just so, so like unsure of what was going on. So Fast forward, I go through college. I still love Jesus, but not really involved in the church very much. I move away. 
And I finally start getting into church because I am at the lowest of the low. I am partying, I'm dating guys. I'm working in a prison, which was such a phenomenal experience, but it was a very dark time. And yeah. most people there were not Christians. I was, there was just no, nothing and nobody pouring into me. And I was mm -hmm. just depleted. And I remember asking God, like, God, I'm going to go on a guy fast. I'm not uh -huh. going to date anyone. I'm not going to do anything. It's just going to be you and me. I can't do it anymore. And literally within a week, my now husband reached out to wow. me. <laughs> <laughs> and was like, Hey, it was this very, you know, classy Facebook message of like, Hey, you're hot uh, talk, or something, something really great like that. Well done. Well done, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But what God showed me through Stephen was a pure, unadulterated love that I had never experienced before. I always assumed men wanted something from me, whether it was spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Yeah. And Stephen just wanted to love me. And wow. God knew that I needed like someone on earth to show me that love. Mm -hmm. And so that was just like such a sweet journey to have. And so within a year we were married huh. and, um, but my faith journey continued because right. Like your husband isn't, doesn't define you. Like he is flawed. And I, <laughs> and I was able to like, go back to God and be like, wow, God, like, thank you for giving me this person that shows me unconditional love and has helped me gain my confidence back. Um, but God, you, you're my stability. You're my safety net. Like you're my man, like mm -hmm. the audience of one. And so, um, we moved a lot and it it was really lonely moving. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of came back to that first feeling that I had, right. When I accepted Christ was like, God, I'm really lonely. Like are, you're there. I know you're there. And so he helped me continue to step into who he wanted me to become and be able to be more confident and love on others and step into this, you know, role as a life coach where I can really encourage and help other women to not just figure out who they are, but to help them have the confidence to realize that there's someone bigger than them that wants to love them. Wow. Oh my gosh. That, <laughs> that warms my heart. Honestly, that's the first time I've heard that story. So I, I'm, I got a newfound love for you and, and Stephen as well. So it, oh. it's good to see um, Tabitha. And I just want to honor you for showing us that, especially for the woman out there, there's, there's more to life than uh, honestly marriage. And there's more to life than, than just pursuing a person or a thing or a matter and um i think that's something that that will one take you very far and it will um hit the the listeners quite well because i do think as a society we struggle to to find the meaning in life and a lot of us put it in to certain life events and to certain people and um to have a courageous woman like yourself speak out and speak about the importance of growth and and never uh being satisfied but also taking time with with yourself and for yourself and and with our, our loving father and and the loving son jesus christ is is truly remarkable so um tabitha matt i am so grateful to, to have you on the show um i do close every episode with with one last question but um if people want to get in touch with you um sign up for your your no book book no guilt book club and your uh your life coaching how can they do so and uh yeah tell us a little more about that because I, I would Absolutely. like to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, they can find me at Tabitha Perry coach. Mm. And so I offer two things. So I have a no guilt book club yep. that is for women who are busy, who want to continue to learn, but feel guilty if they can't finish the book, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Actually, I encourage you not to finish the book. I just encourage <laughs> you to find something within it that you're able to take action on and transform your life. And so there's that. And then there's the coaching aspect, which is making those small little edits. So I can come alongside women and, and help them fully step into the potential that they know that God has for them. I love it. I love it. So yes, listeners, please reach out to Tabitha. She's a, a light to my life and I know she can be a light to yours as well. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Uh, reach out to her Instagram, Facebook, everything else you can find her. Um, Tabitha Perry, our last, uh, our last question for all our guests on on the Know Your Numbers podcast is, what is one truth about money that most people regard as myth? Oh my goodness. One <laughs> truth about money that people regard as myth. Oh, I could tell you myths that people think are true. This is good. <laughs> 
do you ask this question so people look really confused when they're talking about <laughs> I confidence catch them the off whole guard, time? But <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. A truth about money. Well, money is something that you can create. And mm -hmm. that is something that I am learning and yeah. don't quite fully understand. Um, when I worked for the state, when I had like a boss, I would show up and then they would give me money. Well, now I'm an entrepreneur and I'm able to create opportunities, create offers where people purchase that from me. No one's doing that for me. I'm doing that for myself. And that has been definitely a mind shift that I am still figuring out, but yep. it's, it's pretty neat. Hey, that's awesome. And that is a unique answer. We have not heard that here on the show, but uh, I stand in full agreement with that. And it's a, it's a remarkable truth about entrepreneurship and, and paving your own way. So Tabitha, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I can't wait to release this and, and give it all to the listeners, but um, you enjoy the rest of your day and, and we'll talk soon. <laughs> Thanks, Chris.